We're making a steak salad, and before you go, oh no, a steak salad, just stay right where you are, Bucky. This is going to be tremendous. He's making a steak salad. He's making a steak salad. I can just hear that. Why can't he make another, oh, 20 pound cheeseburger? Why can't he make a five pound burrito? Well, I do that a lot, but the weather is improving. You can't eat heavy stuff all the time, can you, Max? You can't? <laughs> can you, Chance? You can't? <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. Sometimes. It's fun to make a great salad, and that's what we're gonna do. The steak part of it is a tri-tip, ladies and gentlemen. So named because of the triangular shape of this. I've said this before, I think if you looked up beef flavor in the dictionary, there should be a picture of a tri-tip. It's the consummate, delicious, smelling, tasting, cooking, beef-centric thing. And I'm gonna smoke it. Essentially reverse searing it, and for those of you that don't have a smoker, I will talk you through what to do to get it exactly where I'm going to get it today. You will not be left in the dark, I promise. Right, Chance? Right. There you go. Right, Max? Right. Let's, uh, let's just trim this guy up a little bit, season it, and then we're on our way. So here's what we've got. Looks pretty nice. Like, nice marbling on this. It's a nice, uh, it's about a two pound tri-tip. I like this. But I want to get rid of these extra bits of fat here because that's not necessary. So these guys can come off. If you look at the top of it, you'll see some of this. Some of this stuff just pulls right off. So these pieces, look, I say it all the time. I'm okay with fat. Fat is flavor. We all know that. But I don't need too much of it. So I'm okay here. The back side, though, has a couple of pieces that I don't like. So just using our knife, we'll just skin these guys off. Once it's gone, most of this fat. I'm okay with this. All right, so. To season this, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it a little bit of oil, just a tiny bit, both sides. And then we go two things. A nice healthy dose of kosher salt and pepper. And even though there will be garlic in other parts of this, a little extra garlic on here is not a bad thing. If you get a bite of steak by itself, you want to taste everything. So we'll season it the right way. Garlic here. Good. And this guy's ready. I'll just put them on my baking sheet. While I was at the store getting my provisions for today, I came across these beautiful uh, little tomatoes still on the vine, or parts of the vine. I suppose the vine is still in the field, so I've got parts of it here. And I thought, ah, let's smoke these along with the tri-tip. It would be amazingly delicious. So here's what we do. Put them in a bowl, like that. See what else we got. These guys here. Okay, we'll give them a little bit of oil as well. Kosher salt and pepper, a nice pinch. Beautiful. Now these guys are gonna go into this. This is a, a, a grill wok pan. It's perfect for all kinds of things when you want the flames to come through the bottom and get what's going on here. Well, of course, we don't have flames in the smoker, but we do have the smoke that we're hoping will travel in and around all these gorgeous tomatoes and do some beautiful stuff to them. I'll take the handle off, we won't need that. We'll take the tomatoes, take our tri-tip, but we'll head to the smoker. So, here we go. Tri-tip comes off, on we go right there. Our lovely tomatoes or tomatoes go in. And now what we want to do is put our temperature probe in to keep an eye on this so I don't have to. I mark it where my fingers are so I know how far to push in. I don't want it sticking out the other side or close to the other side. So in, like that, perfect, we close this. Now I'm gonna set the probe to 125. 
Anywhere between 125 and 130 will make me happy. All right. You're watching me and you're thinking, Sam, this is great and should be lots of fun for people that have a smoker, but I don't have one. What do I do? Do exactly what I'm about to tell you. Reverse searing is cooking a steak at a lower temperature, allowing it to cook perfectly all the way through without that gray ring part of it around the uh, outside. My smoker is set at 250. Simply set your oven at 250 or 275, fine in that range. Take the steak, in this case the tri-tip, out of the fridge, say a half an hour before, let it come to room temperature, then a little oil, season it just like I did, and then it goes into your 250, 260, 275 oven. Don't go hotter than 275. Tomatoes, same thing. Put them on a baking sheet, throw them in the oven along with the steak, you'll be fine. When it's done, I'm using a probe that comes with my uh, smoker. You can buy, I'll show you. Okay, you can buy a uh, aftermarket, I guess, probe thermometer, just like this. Works inside, works outside, works in your grill, works anywhere you want it to work. Uh, we'll stick a link below to one uh, if you want to get your hands on them. They're really useful. It takes the guessing out of this entire protein cooking game, ladies and gentlemen. Unless you've been a chef in a, a proper steak restaurant for 125 years, pushing on the meat to know that, oh, that's rare, that's medium rare, that's uh, well done, uh, that's difficult to do. And uh, is not foolproof. I find using a thermometer is foolproof for me and it's not cheating. I want a great steak. I'm not losing any pride by training wheels like this. You good? Chance, you good? I'm good. Would you buy a probe thermometer, Chance? Yes. A little hesitation. He's young. He's getting there. And by the way, we still have not even had the win a date with Chance contest yet. Can we do that soon, Max, please? We can. Yeah. yeah. Max has new gear. Before, I would turn my head this way to see him on the side of his camera. Now, he's got all this stuff. I don't know. Uh, what are we going to put on our steak? It's going to be great by itself. We're going to make a quick little chimichurri, an Argentinian parsley, oregano, oil, garlic combination that is fantastic. You could do it in a processor, or if you're a lazy son of a bitch like I am, and you don't want to clean the processor after, or as we say in Canada, processor, we just do it by hand and you'll be no worse the wear. You'll be happy and not cleaning extra stuff. We begin with the four big cloves of garlic uh, chopped up. You could use a garlic press if I could find it, but somebody has it and I don't know where it is. Somebody just came in here and took it? Somebody took it. And now a uh, head of parsley, chopped up fine. I will say one of the things I like about hand chopping this is that it makes it chunkier. Big pinch of kosher salt and pepper. Nice sized pinch of red pepper flakes. Olive oil, about a half a cup or so. That's about right. A couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar. The next ingredient would be fresh oregano. If I'd remember to get it, and I didn't. So I'm using dried oregano, and yes, someone will bitch me out for not making a proper chimichurri. Will mine be delicious? Absolutely. Would any of my guests know? Absolutely not, unless they were douchey Culinary Institute of America wannabes. But I don't have friends like that. So a nice big pinch of uh, how about, uh, I don't know, two teaspoons of this dried oregano. And, and then last but not least, the juice of a whole lemon squeezed in. Beautiful. And I'll see it stay in my hand. And Max, we mix. Mm. I can smell, I can see. I know exactly what this is gonna be like when it goes on top of that warm tri-tip. Chunky, amazing, and delicious. All right, next, our dressing. We're making a ranch, a homemade ranch. I know it doesn't sound very sophisticated for a steak salad, but when you make your own, it's really good. It goes great with the steak. The whole thing's gonna be fantastic together. It's the same ranch that we made for the 
Chicken Bacon Ranch, the CBR that was, oh my God, mind blowing. Chance, remember that? Oh yeah. Layla, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Layla wasn't here for the Chicken Bacon Ranch, sorry. Intern, interning, thinking she wants to be in this business. Does she max and chance? I would. I think so. <laughs> All right, uh, everything in the bowl, we mix and then yeah, it's over. This starts with equal parts of sour cream, buttermilk, love buttermilk, and mayonnaise. And then it gets fresh garlic, always a big pinch of salt and pepper, juice of half a lemon, yeah. and the following combination of herbs, parsley, fresh chopped dill, and chive. And everybody goes in. This is what makes this rather exquisite. Mmm. Mmm. We should taste this, shouldn't we? Actually, I'll just put a little on a tomato half and it's great. Max's technology is about to blow up. No, it's the smoker. Oh, this it's the smoker. The smoker. Oh my God, this is so good. That's the reason, folks. That's the reason why you make your own. We're waiting on the tomatoes and the tri-tip. We're going to do a little bread thing right at the last minute. We're so close. This would be a perfect time for one of Max's black screens with my face all over it and that whoosh noise. The tri-tip's ready. The tomatoes are ready. Let's get our bread ready. Then we'll get that. Then we'll build. Then we'll eat. Then we all go home. You're at home. We'll go home. Cut the bread. Take our beautiful, gorgeous, crusty country loaf. We're going to cut a couple nice slices out of this guy. OK, maybe four. Red strap and all chested too. And then we give them a quick little bit of olive oil on top. It's going to help these guys brown up on the grill gorgeously. Set these off to the side. And after they come off the grill, we're going to take this clove of garlic, cut it in half this way with the paper on, and we're going to rub the raw garlic on the cooked grilled bread that will give it the most delicate, gorgeous garlic flavor ever. But now let's get the steak. And there we have it. Okay, take the tomatoes off. Lovingly, stay like that, guys. Hello, everyone. This, this, this. Now pull the, the probe out. And there's the tri-tip. Oh my right God. What? Oh Jesus, what did you do? Holy sh wait. I know what it is. F I need to clean it. F I don't know if I can do it on here. Let's, How did this happen? I don't, I don't know what happened here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a direct result of someone. We don't know who, but you can be uh, assured that we're gonna look into this. Someone not cleaning that grill uh, well enough, or ever, apparently. <laughs> We're going to have to have a talk with somebody when we find out who they are. In the meantime, we're back in business, and now we can uh, sear up this tri-tip to put some beautiful color on the outside. And our friend goes on for color and flavor, of course. The little marks it's going to get, that means flavor. Don't forget that. So we're only gonna go about a minute aside total. And I feel like I'm at about 30 seconds here, so I'll give it a 45 degree flip. Lovely. Lovely. Here we go. So this side's good. There you go, just a little color. That's all you're going for. Another 45 degree flip. 30 seconds or so. Off it comes, and we build our salad. 
Our base for what I'm calling a share salad is baby red butter lettuce leaves. I mean, come on. I could stop right here and it would be amazing. So put a bunch out. Look, you want people not to have to feel like they can only have one or two pieces. So you got a beautiful base of this. Next, we've got these gorgeous tomatoes that we want to strategically place. Got a couple other randoms that we can just throw in to make this pretty. Now on top, this is gonna be a pretty simple salad. Don't forget, the steak is gonna be really the crowning glory. So I've got some Persian cucumbers. They're just the little guys. You can eat them skin and all. They're really like one of my favorite things in the cucumber world to have. I've got those. Let's put some avocado on here. Let's cut the tri-tip now. And here's the important part to know. We talk about this all the time. You only want to cut against the grain. You know how hard it is for me to say that in American? Against the grain. You can see the grain runs this way. So you don't want to cut like this. So my favorite thing to do with a tri-tip is figure out where the grain starts to change. It runs lengthwise on this little small end. So I cut it right here in the middle. And looking at the beautiful doneness. And ladies and gentlemen, I yanked this at 130. And that is what we want, exactly. So now we can cut against the grain like this. Beautiful, beautiful pieces. And you look in here and you see like little rivers of fat, that is only gonna add to make this a ridiculously amazing salad. We can cut some off of this side, same thing. Oh my. Tri-tip, it really is a fantastic cut. It's very popular on the West Coast. If you don't have it on the East Coast, then just ask your butcher because all cows have two of them. They may just call them something different there. All right, I think we're almost there. Let me get rid of this for a sec. Now it's time for our steak. It will look like this. How do you not like this? You wanna bring this to the table? We have this grilled bread that's very hot. Ow that needs now this garlic to be rubbed on it. So we take the garlic like this, ow, and we rub, ow, and it just gives it that really nice perfume of gorgeous garlicness. Last piece. So here we have our two dressings that we can set up here for now but I definitely want to take some of the chimichurri while the steak is still a little bit warm and just do this with it. Just this oil starting to soak into the beautiful, nicely cooked. And then because I have to, just a little more kosher salt and pepper over the whole thing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is I think one of the most perfect share salads ever. You put some tongs with it, your guests get some steak, some avocado, the tomatoes, some of the beautiful butter lettuce underneath. They've got dressing right here on the side. And so now let's imagine that this is what your actual party is like and your guests come up and they go, my God, this is beautiful. So allow me to take some of these beautiful greens underneath. And they say, what are these? And you say, oh, those are red butter leaf greens. So take some of those, please. And now some of the steak to go on top of this. this is gorgeous, look at that. And I need a few tomatoes, so let me just get, grab this little side guy here. And I do love my avocado, so I'll take some of this and put it here. But I haven't done anything with the dressing yet. And here's the dressing. So the dressing, yes, just like this, on the outskirts of these things. So when you get a bite, it's there. And if you want more of the tremendously flavorful chimichurri, just a little bit more on the steak would be a loving thing to do. Fine, I'll have a piece of garlic bread. 
and then you stand back and you admire. And first you go, well, maybe I'll just start with an innocent little tomato that's been smoked. That's just a smoky explosion of absolute deliciousness. Holy shit. Even if you didn't do them on the smoker, you just roasted them. In the oven, while the steak was cooking, a roasted tomato is glorious. How about some of these leaves with our homemade ranch? Oh, that's not even ranch-like. Seriously, it bears no resemblance to real ranch. Other than, it's incredible. And I know people love their ranch, so. And then, sorry for the fingers, but I must. A piece of the tri-tip. That gloriously garlic-infused It's tender, it's beefy. There's so much flavor by itself, but with the chimichurri, it's mental. And then the real happy accident happens when you get some chimichurri and some of this ranch all together on a bite of the tri-tip. People are gonna love you for this, love you. And if you first thought salad, I can't serve people just salad. Well, it's way more than that. Oh my God, and the bread. Don't forget about the bread. With the rubbed garlic. Last but not least, what if you took your bread with the rubbed garlic that you really taste and then put a couple leaves on it with some of the ranch? Wait. It's getting long. Wait. And then you, you took a tomato and squooshed a tomato on top with a little bit of avocado and then a piece of the steak on top of that. And you made yourself a little tri-tip crostini. 